sister-in-law freaks out because she feels my boyfriend and I are denying her child food. My boyfriend's family came to town for a week and stayed with us. We made sure to have clean towels, fresh sheets, a stocked fridge, etc. Unfortunately, two days after they got here, my boyfriend got laid off. Ever since then, he has been really down in the dumps and grumpy. Understandable. My boyfriend's family doesn't have the best manners. They leave dirty plates behind, don't clean up after their kids' messes and such. I tried my best to ignore it and just clean them up after them when they weren't home. Today during lunch, we served lasagna. After we finished eating, my boyfriend's sister got up and started packing lasagna for her kids to have for dinner. She packed what her kids left over and was adding more on top. They weren't going to be spending the night with us, so she wanted to have a quick and easy dinner ready for them. I told my boyfriend that if there wasn't enough lasagna left, that I can order him dinner and not to worry. My boyfriend got up and asked his sister how much she was taking because he wanted to make sure that him and I also have enough food for dinner. Again, he's been very stressed about money since getting laid off. She screamed at him, how dare you deny food for my child, and picked her things up and left. Everything escalated out of nowhere, and she packed her things and went to another rental. She felt like we were denying her child of food. I began crying and ran into my room because, unfortunately, I don't do well in these types of situations. I grew up around an emotionally abusive family, and these events are really triggering for me. She told my boyfriend that she did not feel welcome and that she felt we were being rude to her. Am I at fault for making her feel unwelcome, or is she just an entitled parent? She said that I was super rude for making that initial comment in the first place, the one where I told my boyfriend to not worry if we do not have enough food left. Your boyfriend's family sucks. Let them pack up and don't let them back in your home. His sister is a horrendous guest and frankly, a person. Look, man, I get it. Like, we're all struggling, you know, money is tight and food is expensive. You could just ask, hey, would you mind if I maybe I packed some lasagna for my kids so they have a dinner, I can leave some over for you? But no, they didn't do that. They just started packing lasagna like it was theirs. That, that's that shitty. Couple brought a toddler with squeaker shoes to a wedding. Great idea. Some dear friends got married the other day, and it definitely was not a child-free wedding. And to the parents in the attendance credit, the two toddlers were mostly very well-behaved and as quiet as toddlers can be expected to be. Except for the goddamn shoes. The point at which it came to a climax of how the hell did you think this was acceptable was during the after-dinner speeches. Parents and close friends delivered beautiful speeches. When I first met Jordan, fake names used, squeak, they squeak were, squeak in, squeak the squeak college, squeak cav, squeak Taria. I just stared daggers at this couple. How on God's green earth did either of them think, ah yes, wedding, get the shoes with dog toy squeakers in them, people will definitely not hate us. I had no idea these existed. Pretty sure my granddaughter will also not now. <laughs> Entitled aunt demands I take out my piercing. Oh boy. A few days ago, my family met at my great-grandparents' house for a family Christmas celebration. My great-aunt, grandma's sister, was there with her grandson, his wife, and their child. This particular aunt is always causing drama in the family. We'll call her R. My dad took me to get my septum pierced for my 18th birthday in early 2023, so I've had it pierced for a while. I've only had the plain silver horseshoe I got back when it was first pierced for a while, but I recently got a new horseshoe piercing decorated with a bee on one end and a honeycomb on the other. It stands out more than the other one, so I guess she finally noticed it during our celebration. I was sitting on the stairs with my brother as always. R was sitting on the floor across from the stairs with her great-granddaughter, S, and two of my younger cousins. She stared at me for a while, which I assumed was because of my hair, because she's never liked the fact that I shaved the sides and got an undercut. Instead, she asked me if I had my septum pierced. I said I did, and she simply asked, why? Before I could even answer her, the answer would have been something along the lines of, because I wanted to. She goes, you know, they say that a woman gets her septum pierced so that her husband can attach her to a leash and drag her around by it. She actually said that in front of the three younger girls in the room. My aunt and uncle, who were sitting on the couch off to my left, were shocked. Since none of us wanted to cause a scene, we kind of just laughed it off. I was a bit snappy and said, well, mine is a horseshoe, not a ring, so it doesn't matter. The topic was dropped for a while. Later, after we all ate lunch, R cornered me by the bathroom after I washed my hands and demanded I take the piercing out because I was, quote, being a bad influence for poor S. S was too busy playing around in her new princess dress to notice anything anyone else was doing, so that was bull. I'm a very anxious person normally, but this <laughs> of a lady has had something against me and my dad basically my entire life, so I was sick of <laughs> it. I told her to back off and to stop judging me and my decisions when she screwed up her own marriage so much that her ex didn't like being referred to as her ex because it connects him to her. She gave me so many nasty looks the rest of the afternoon, but I didn't care. I'm already planning on getting more nose piercings and her stupid ideals can't stop me. 
yeah, that's what I'm talking about. You tell her. I, I, I can never process like the idea of telling someone like, hey, you better cut that shit out and stop expressing your, 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 your Satan worshiping nod. Like, dude, just shut the f up. My favorite question from old judgmental people when it comes to appearances, why? So I could have this pleasant conversation with you, of course, Aunt Barbara. Well, I should have said that to her. She hates basically everything I do with my appearance, so she'll really hate when I start dressing like the pastel goth I want to dress as. EM freaks out I engaged her nonverbal son. Older lady stopped at our shop because her motor started ticking all of a sudden. Wasn't buying that since the ticking is the ticking sound of a spectacular engine death coming soon. She was busy with the text and in the waiting room was her teenage age kid just staring at the Rubik's Cube on the counter. So when I finished cashing out a vendor, I went to the office, grabbed the cube and handed it to him. His eyes lit up and he started playing with it. He said thank you and signed, so I signed back. You're welcome. I only know basic sign, working on ASL. That's when the mom noticed she thought I was talking to her kid. I get the whole special need thing. I have a brother that's special needs, but I don't believe in socially isolating them from engaging with normal people. When I stepped back out into the shop, she got in my face, telling me her kid is deaf and that I wasted time talking to him in the first place. I explained to her that I knew some sign language, and all I did was say you're welcome to him when he thanked me for the toy. She didn't see me sign to her son, so she missed all of that and backed down when she went to the office and asked her son what I said. They ended up leaving after finding out there's nothing we could do to save the engine. We let him keep the Rubik's Cube. I honestly don't think he's ever seen one. Well, that's really sweet that you let him keep the cube. She got in my face telling me her kid is deaf and that I wasted time talking to him in the first place. This is the part that gets to me. These aren't the words of an overprotective parent. They're the words of someone with an ableist view of their own child, and it's very saddening. Wow, this mother evidently sees her child as less than a typical child. That is heartbreaking. She could have created such a lovely and meaningful example for her son out of this interaction, but instead she berates you for a wasted effort. I sincerely hope it was over protectiveness and naivety that led to her flubbing it up, but I don't think it is. A parent of a neurodiverse child who is mindful of opportunities to help them integrate into a neurotypical world would have cherished this interaction. Instead, her instant reaction is to shut it down and consider it useless. I bet this child will remember your kindness, however. My parents believe we should travel 10 hours via flight to them so that they get to see their granddaughter. We live in New Zealand and my parents live in Singapore. This is the first grandchild in the family. She just turned two years old. My parents came to New Zealand once when she was eight months old. They stayed for six weeks. They didn't enjoy the visit thoroughly as they prefer the weather in Singapore and they miss their type of foods available back home too. They also find the 10-hour flight tiresome and would rather not do it too often. My husband is a teacher and they're expecting us to fly to Singapore during the summer holidays this year to spend a good four to five weeks with them so they get to see their granddaughter again. I've tried explaining that it's stressful for us to fly with a toddler and have her entire routine and sleep schedule. She sleeps in her crib in her own room here. Here, disrupted and we are nervous to do it. They emotionally blackmail us and say if we don't come to them, then my daughter won't know them and they won't get to spend time with her. Is it really my job to make sure that they get to see her? They are fully capable enough to fly to us, but won't do it. Are they not interested in Zoom calls to have a relationship with their grandchild? Why are they allowed to not feel comfortable with long travel and staying outside their home, but they want you to subject a two-year-old to it? I have three kids in routine, save your sanity. You take your kid to them and it'll be chaos trying to settle her with a new routine, then trying to change it back after the five to six week trip. They need to learn about video calls or something. My father-in-law had a meltdown because I proved he doesn't know his son. So me, 34M, and my husband, 30M, do our damnness to not spend an abundance of time with my father-in-law. He's a cowardly narcissist who says, hot dog, unironically. Ever since I came into the picture almost seven years ago, we have simply not meshed. A great deal of that is due to the fact that I've spent those years instilling confidence and boundary setting in husband. Father-in-law does not like being told no. We literally got kicked out of a restaurant one time because he couldn't accept that they wouldn't give him a discount. So needless to say, our interactions are nothing more than the exchanging of fake pleasantries. So last week, we're over there for our quarterly visit. The way these evenings typically go is that my husband occupies my father-in-law while my mother-in-law tests out her new English vocabulary on me. This time, my husband is doing the bulk of the talking to both of them because he's excited about the new organization he's working with. Father-in-law keeps trying to change 
change the subject because it's been two seconds since the subject of the conversation was about him. My husband and my mother-in-law both snap. I'm not entirely sure what they said as my Spanish is still terrible, but it amounted to them telling it father-in-law to shut the f up and listen. Father-in-law gets obstinate and essentially tells my husband that no matter what the organization is, it'll never compare to the work he did in his youth. Father-in-law literally just hiked through Central America with a white savior complex until things got violent and he came back home. My husband understandably storms out with my mother-in-law hot on his tail. Awkwardness ensues because I'm chuckling at father-in-law. And a back and forth between the father-in-law and poster. He never spoke to me like that until you came along. I know, I'm so proud. You've changed him. No, this is who he's always been. You just never noticed it before. I know my son. What's his favorite color? What? What's his favorite color? It's the same one he had as a kid. Dot, dot, dot. Name two of his interests. They don't make any sense. Name them. Dot, dot, dot. Here's an easy one. What's the name of the organization he's working with? Dot, dot, dot. This wannabe Bob Ross granola eating mofo couldn't answer. My husband said the name of the organization like five times that night. Me, you want to know the sad part? My parents can answer each and every one of those questions, and they've known your son a fraction of the time you have. Cue the screeching in Spanish. Being yelled at in a foreign language by a non-native speaker is a surreal experience. Obviously, my husband comes in and yells back and it blows up even more, but the part that stands out is the fact that father-in-law still refused to admit that he just hadn't taken a genuine interest in my husband in years. Like, bruh, you don't even know your kid's favorite color. Hello? Now my husband is contemplating going no contact and I can't blame him. The truth hurts in every language, but some give it more pizzazz. <coughs> Cousin abandoned my niece at my house while I was camping. Over the week, my husband and I went on a camping trip before summer season with its glorious warm weather was officially over. We weren't at home and had no cell reception where we were. We left Thursday, September 7th and returned on Monday, September 11th, where nothing ever goes wrong. While we were away, my cousin left my niece still trapped to her car seat outside my house door on Friday, September 8th and sent me some text messages. Remember, I had no cell reception where I was camping. I would never have known while I was gone. On. I saw the missed messages after I returned home. It wasn't a request to ask if I could help her. It was simply a message notifying me that she left my niece in front of my door along with a bag with her stuff for the weekend. She did not ask me beforehand if I could help her babysit. There was no possible way for me to know. Even if I knew, I would have still declined unless it was a medical emergency in the family and they had no other choice. I live in a rural area where everyone is on 30 acre plots of land, so no one knew my niece was there. I had no clue. The neighbors had no clue. My niece was literally abandoned in front of my door until Saturday noon when my parents came by to drop off my parcels that were delivered to their house. That's when they saw my niece. My parents called my aunt and had her come pick her up. I can only assume that my parents, my aunt, and my grandmother scolded my cousin for leaving my niece at my door. When I got home, all I saw was the initial text message telling me that my niece was dropped off at my place, then a string of very rude text messages and voice messages from my cousin calling me irresponsible for leaving my niece outside and endangering her, because what if that coyotes in the area attacked the helpless infant? I'm just so frustrated. That child could have died. What if your parents hadn't come by? Report the kid's parents. Coyotes are a thing in rural areas. Asked me to get out of the wheelchair spot on the bus for her stroller? I'm a wheelchair user and was taking the bus like I always do. There are specific spots at the front of the bus that are for disabled people and the elderly to use. I was sitting in my wheelchair strapped into the bus and a woman with a twin stroller got on and asked me if I would get off so she could put her stroller where I was parked. I told her that I would absolutely not. This spot was for disabled people, not her stroller, and she can take the next bus if she really needs to. She tells me that she has an appointment to get to, so I tell her right back that she can fold her stroller up and go first further into the bus if she really needs to take this one, but I'm not moving. She gestured at my crossed legs and she had the balls to ask me to fold up my wheelchair and walk it to farther back. I am able to walk, just not much. I literally just started laughing and she accused me of faking my disability. She refused to move out of the front of the bus area where the driver can't have people and was promptly kicked off the bus. Good luck getting to that appointment, lady. My friend has no shame. He's para and if he gets blocked in from his van or anywhere, he will ram the offering vehicle with his electric ramp. Do not block the yellow zone or redneck wheelchair man will destroy your paint. 
He also has a car kitty who is therapy for others in chairs because he's not spooked of wheels. In the US, there is a website that if you take a picture of the tag number and the disabled parking sign showing they are illegally parking, they will send, I think it's a $500 fine. I've done it once several years ago. Facebook stalks me, then demands his rights. Just needed a vent. NC with narcissistic father for five years. Thought I was free. Got the occasional email, phone call from him, but never answered and blocked where I could. During that time, I met and married my husband and had my LO. About six months ago, after hearing from someone that I was happy and to leave me alone, he decided that he must find me. Managed to find my husband's Facebook page as he is friends with a sibling and found a cover photo of the three of us. Ever since he has been threatening me to get his rights to his grandchild and has now filed in court for it because despite having next to zero chance, he can still drag me through the legal system. He thinks he is too smart for a lawyer, so hasn't even bothered to work out he has no rights. So now I have to front up to court. <laughs> At least he is affirming my decision to go in C and keep my family away from him. The judge is going to laugh his entitled ass out of court. I would ask that all your legal costs be paid by that asshole. You and your family are not his property. This, because it may fall under vexatious litigation. Talk to a lawyer about this. Parent sits in my seat because she had a kid. I was boarding a flight from New York City to Toronto. I had checked into the flight 24 hours in advance as soon as it opened because I needed a window seat. When I got to my seat, there was a woman seated in my seat with a child, probably aged six or seven. I told her the seat she was in was mine. I said it very politely since it could have been an honest mistake. She pointed at a seat a couple rows away and told me that I can sit in her original seat, which was not a window seat. I told her I wanted a window seat, which is what I originally selected. She just looked at me, then looked at her kid, then at me, without moving. I was about to ask her again for my chair back, but the man behind me overheard our conversation and offered me his window seat. I didn't want to cause more of a scene, so I accepted it, and he sat in the woman's original seat. If it was so important for her to sit beside her child, why did she not check in when it opened? When I checked in, there were multiple sets of two seats together that she could have selected. If it was me, I'd probably prepay for selected seats just to make sure. On top of that, she didn't even ask me if we could switch, she just assumed I would be okay with it. A part of me wishes I demanded my seat back. Should have talked to a flight attendant. We can't let these entitled brats win. Yeah, no, I would have been like, uh, no, I'd like the seat I paid for, please. It's not being rude, it's just, I want the thing that I am entitled to. She's being entitled, but you are literally entitled to your seat. Entitled mother ignores boundaries, encourages child to open pet carrier in public. This happened just now. One of my pet rats suddenly became very ill. I rushed to the vets on public transport with another rat in the carrier to keep him company. The ill rat was admitted to hospital overnight and the outlook is not good. It's likely he will need to be euthanized. I was very upset when I got back on the train and as I got on, a mother and daughter, five-ish, gasped in delight at seeing a pet in a carrier. I started ugly crying when I sat down and clutched the carrier. The mother and daughter sat next to me and the mother joyfully encouraged her daughter to ask me what pet I had. I started crying harder and said, I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood to chat. I will need to have an animal euthanized. You can have a look at my rat if you want. I turned away, put the carrier on the seat next to me and cried more. A few seconds later, the woman is encouraging her child to open the carrier to play with my rat. Okay, he's a big softy, but the train was stressing him out. I pulled the carrier away and said, please don't do that. The woman pulls her daughter back and says loudly and passive aggressively, wasn't that lady rude? The child starts laughing at me. I'm listening to sad music, nose running, openly sobbing, while this woman and her kid insult me. Screw you. I blow up on people like that. Like that while I'm processing the loss of a pet will bring out the rage. I'll show you fucking rude. I'm sorry you're dealing with the potential loss of a pet. It's never easy. You are doing an excellent job of showing your child to be a rude bitch. Now shut the fuck up and leave me the fuck alone. I'm so very sorry about your darling rat. My cousin sends our family her child's Christmas list each year and it's completely insane. Every no November, I, 24F, receive a dreaded text in our extended family group chat from my cousin, 35F. The text includes a highly detailed Christmas list from her five-year-old, who we'll call Penny. The items are always expensive, obscure, and very hard to find. Additionally, she expects us to reply with the item we have purchased, then sends back the updated list with that item checked off. Each year, there's exactly the number of items for people in the chat, and once people hurry to claim the cheapest ones, you're left with 100 to 300 
$100 in items to choose from. My cousin is an only child and her mom caters to this as well as your dad, but the rest of us are getting pretty sick of it. Last year, someone didn't follow the list and said they'd probably already bought something else in the group chat, and she responded that isn't what Penny wants this year, which made them feel guilty for not adhering to this insanity. Now some backstory. Penny has autism, is nonverbal, and the sweetest child ever. My cousin and her husband are good parents for the most part, but they are a little self-focused. For example, they are both collectors of things like manga and toys and lose their minds if Penny touches their things, and the home is full of their collections. They have an entire room dedicated to this, which they call the fun room, and their daughter isn't allowed in. Not so fun. Now here's the kicker. The items on the list are almost always part of a collection, either vintage, certain edition, this or that, and tons and tons of Beanie Babies. They have started a toy collection similar to their own for Penny, but it's a lot of things I've never seen her enjoy or show much interest in. One year, the most excitement she showed was for the box, and she loves Disney movies and Paw Patrol, but never has she gotten gifts related to these things. Also, we suggested some gifts like a toy kitchen or something interactive and sensory, and they shut that down in favor of expensive Lego. Star Wars Lego? She's five. I know damn well that's going straight to daddy's fun room. This year, I'm getting her an Ariel doll and matching dress. I'm stopping the madness. Allow me to introduce you and your family to a useful word. No, it's about time. If you're the parents who brought their out of control infant to the Lion King on Broadway and didn't take them out when they were screaming the whole first half, congratulations, you win most entitled parents of the year award. I'm so glad you got to enjoy a show out even though you obviously failed to find a babysitter. Never mind the rest of the theater goers who also paid to see the show. How dense and self-centered can you be? Same, I'm a mother to an infant and this infuriates me for a few reasons. Baby is crying because they are likely terrified, Seriously, a musical where music is going to be loud and new? What the fuck? Baby is surrounded by strangers in a confined space. Guess they don't care if they get sick? Hope they were above the three month mark or else baby needs to spend time in the hospital if they do. Oh, and you know, babies freaking cry. For fuck's sake, why bring them to a show? This isn't a restaurant or something. People paid to listen. Selfish on so many levels. That poor baby. You're ruining my body. I made it, it's mine. So this happened two years ago when I got my first tattoo. I was 21 and still living with my controlling mother. She was shocked when I told her I wanted to get a tattoo, but she didn't physically stop me. I got home with my upper arm tattooed, solar system with watercolors, to find her in the living room, crying. She started talking about how I ruined her body by getting that tattoo, about how she made my body so it's hers. She asked if I cried while getting it. I told her I didn't, because it didn't really hurt at all. She yelled at me, of course you cried. I cried, because I knew what you were doing to my body. She calmed down after a while and even said my tattoo looked nice, but I felt really gross after all that. She also flipped out when I got my hair cut. My sisters and I were always told that she'd sue any hairstylist who dared to cut our hair. So it still took me until I was 19 to finally get a short haircut, and she cried when I got my first piercing too. This woman is nuts sometimes. A little edit. I do not know how my grandmother would feel about this whole thing. My mother cut contact with her before I was born, because she was physically abusive towards my mother my mother's siblings, and my siblings. Gotta love people thinking that just because they gave birth to something means they get to control all aspects of it. Yeesh. Good for you on the tattoo. It sounds beautiful, but that woman might seriously need to be put on an info diet or time out if at all possible. My 24F mom demanded to be present during my gynecology exam and barged in. Edit. Sorry for the confusion. I'm 24 currently, and my mom is in her early 50s. My mom knew about my appointment and that I was going to be examined. Clothing would be removed. She wanted to accompany me last minute for support and I couldn't argue with her to stay home or I would be late. I thought that she would wait outside. She has done so before, but for other types of appointments, but instead she tried to go in with me. The staff kept her out and later she knocked on the door and walked into the appointment saying she needed to tell my doctor about my family medical history. I had already told my doctor all of it. She was taken out of the room and the door was locked. When I left the hospital, she wasn't there anymore and was upset that I kept her out. I told her it was a very private thing to be asked about your past relationships and getting examined. I'm extremely shy with my body and it's always hard for me to do these things. So of course I didn't want her there or would even think for her to want to be there. She told me she wants grandchildren and she is my mom. Therefore, it's not that big of a deal for her to be with me during my visit and that I should stop acting like my body is sacred since I would need to get used to other people, medical staff, seeing it. She also told me that my dad is always with her whenever she needed to be examined, so I should allow her to be there with me. I told her a spouse is way different than a parent and that since she hates to talk about sex,
ex and has shamed me in the past. She is very religious and hated to see me with anyone. There was no reason for her to be there. Edit, I wanted to clarify something. At the time of the appointment, I was temporarily living with my family, so she knew I was going to the hospital and forced me to tell her why. If I disagree with her, she will try to make my life hell and make my family turn against me. Also, the appointment was not related to fertility or pregnancy. I don't live with them anymore, so she doesn't know about my life as I went low contact. Your body, your privacy, your choice. An OBGYN visit is not a group participation sport. Uh, the excuse, I'm your mom, or I'm your dad, I'm your parent, whatever, is never a valid excuse. EP put their kid in my car to say hi to my dog. Yesterday, my dog and I were road tripping back from spending Thanksgiving with my family. A few hours in, we stopped to stretch legs and get some water. Pulled into a rest stop with plenty of parking, not very busy. After I let him out to stretch, he was sitting in the back with the windows open while I pulled up directions in the driver's seat. For context, it's an SUV with a three-seater bench in the back. My dog was sitting directly in the middle, didn't have his head out the window. All of a sudden, I see a toddler being lifted into and through the open back window by their parent to pet my dog? The child's body was 50% into my vehicle's open window. This wasn't a hand next to the window to get him to come sniff it. The EP is laughing, as is the other EP holding a younger baby standing next to the parent that's currently trapezing their toddler into my car. They did not ask or say anything. They just laughed and stuck their toddler into my open window. I was so shocked that I audibly gasped and just turned around and gave them a confused, annoyed look. It took at least five solid seconds for them to acknowledge my reaction and pull their kid out through the window. Never apologized, just walked away while still laughing. I have a recognizable, friendly, giant breed dog that kids typically want to pet. Luckily, he's already used to having to interact with parents and young kids. This scenario was just so unsafe to me, though. These parents have no idea if my huge dog dog is friendly and put their kid in an extremely unsafe situation, let alone the rudeness of just entering someone else's vehicle? In what remote world was this okay to do? I wish I wasn't so shocked and said something. Kids are crunchy and taste good with ketchup. My German Shepherd loves them. People are idiots. No need for ketchup. They're self-saucing. What do you say in that situation? Uh, hello? Like, you're just sticking your kid into someone's vehicle? Like, uh, like saying it out loud, it, you feel like you shouldn't have to say that because why are you doing that my 61 year old mother just found the will of my deceased father's parents and although she is given 20,000 the rest of their estate goes to myself 29 and my sister 19 my mother has said to us that we have to give our portion to her of course I would give her money if she needed it but my dad died two years ago and she spent a million dollars of his life insurance on trivial things my sister is disabled and easily manipulated so she said yes but I feel it's unfair to both of us to be expected to just give her money against what sh her, the will says. She is angry and she called me selfish, but it's in the will. I will give her some of it because she's my mom and I love her, but I surely shouldn't be expected to give her everything. I feel a bit angry because she was very mean to me and also because my sister, who is disabled and can't work full time, might actually need this money to survive. Anyway, appreciate the comments or advice. Update. We had a long chat and she apologized and she now only wants a small portion in acknowledgement of her being part of the family. Yes, she still won something, but it's up to me and my sister to decide when my grandparents are dead. She's still a bit entitled, but whatever. Hopefully things will blow over. At the moment, I'm okay with her having some. Maybe 50k to 100k out of a million. But I'm sure that when I have kids, my priorities will change. I'm going to start trying with my husband in the next year or so, and I didn't make promises. My uncle, the executor of the will, found a letter from his father saying that they gave my mom 150,000 already as her inheritance earlier. And upon this realization, mom is somewhat a appeased, as is he. I think things are okay for now. Thank you, everyone. I'm still going to copy that will and keep it safe, but I believe the critical period is in the past. Also, she agreed that my sister would only match what I give, which is a major improvement. Get a copy of the will, save on cloud drive. Don't budge. Tell her you're saving it for her elder care when she's older. Get your own lawyer so they can monitor the situation for you in case she forges your name on anything. Obviously, don't sign anything she gives you without a review from your lawyer.